So I'm, I'm Brian Johnson, so Andre Chilkin. We're, uh, we'll talk about a, a new technology called uh, dynamic device personalization uh, that we introduced a couple months ago in our, uh, in our networking controllers. So <clears throat> a while ago, we started looking at how can we start optimizing the comms market um, with our, with our network controllers using DPDK and so forth. And we had started building in VXLAN, Genev, MPLS type of tunnel offloads into our, our controllers. Started working with Andre who focuses on the comms market and said, so how many other protocols do we need to start supporting? And he sent me this list and he said, well, the green ones are the ones that we support and the, uh, the orange ones are the ones that are out there that have been there that we don't support in our native or our default firmware. And then we have some other combinations of like VXLAN with GTP. And so we started looking at this, well, how do we break this down? We tried to bucket them. We saw a bunch of overlap on the different segments. Some of them actually conflicted with each other. So we started looking at how can we create a, a mechanism to optimize for these different combinations, but stay within the limitations of what our hardware can support. Because there are only so many protocols that we can support in the, in the firmware without growing it out and adding um, a bunch of cost to the mix. So I'll let Andre go into uh, what we uh, came up with. Yeah, so uh, I'm Andre Chalikin. I'm software architect for DDP. And I'll try to explain how it works in a very short time. Uh, so again, uh, as Brian said, we have such a variety of protocols. And we see new protocols appearing almost every day uh, right now. And all these crazy combinations. You can have MPLS over L2TP. You can have PPPoE over VXLAN, which again, merging technology from Tunnelin, current Tunnelin with previous generations. So, and every time when we see this, uh, either some new combination or completely new protocol, uh, if we're talking about uh, NICs out of shelf, it's not supported. Uh, so, and then we have all sorts of problems. Let's say we have a 40 gig NIC, 25 gig NIC, 50 gig NIC, and we have this old traffic coming to NIC, and NIC doesn't understand it. For example, if we take GTP, GTP is over UDP, and it's control, it's user data, so how we can separate it? For now, usually what you would do, you will have a one core receiving all traffic, doing classification, trying to extract fields from inner packets, calculate hash, do switching, and so on. Ideally, what we would like to see, everything is done in the NIC. But again, NIC or even FPJ, we have some resource limitations. We cannot put all combinations in one device. And again, as we showed on previous slides, probably we don't need to because we can segment it into two different segments or maybe multiple segments. Uh, there are some use cases when we have a same device facing two segments. Again, how we can address it? idea of dynamic device personalization is that we can reprogram parser of our NICs dynamically. You don't need to update your hardware. You don't need to update your firmware, which can take quite a lot of time because probably you will need to reboot, you need to restart. Here it's completely different. We have a parser and we can dynamically update it on the fly. It takes only a split of a second to add new parser graph, to update existing, to remove it. So, and using this technology, we can do in a field, we are joking, it's a field uh, programmable ASIC now. So we can have field, program this uh, profiles applied to our NIC, and uh, you can have protocols, new protocols. You can have, uh, if it's a two different devices facing access and core, again, you can apply different pro profiles to the same device and it will handle it. So what we can do now, uh, for example, of course we already have uh, VXLAN, Genif, and so on. But if we have combination like MPLS over GRE, GTP, PPPoE, some very, something completely new from, uh, which came from Google, Quick, 
or if you need extra IP protocols like ASP, AH, we can program our parser on the fly. And what it gives you, now you don't need to do all this classification in core. So you're not bottlenecked anymore. Nick will do classification, will present all information it can extract from the packet on, field, uh, on receive descriptor. So when you receive a packet, you already know, oh, it's my GTPU, it's my GTPC, IPv4 payload, IPv6 payload. So saving a lot of uh, clocks on a, um, a software. Plus, uh, existing protocol, let's take TCP. If you want to accelerate TCP, you probably would like to put uh, TCP sign with uh, ACK or sign with AUTAC in a separate queue or a separate, uh, probably even VF if you want to. Yeah, it's possible. Again, we can dynamically reprogram it on the fly and uh, you'll be able to use it for switching. And again, this is dynamic. It means that if you have a data center and you have uh, VFs or VMs migrating, you can say, okay, for during the day on this server, I run application which needs DTP. Great. Apply profile in a split on the second, you can run this VF. When you don't need it anymore, roll it back to original state and apply different profile, PPPoE. Again, so we saving, we can save a lot of time on this reprogram. You can have a library of profiles. You can apply them dynamically as you wish. Uh, and use all fields that Nix didn't know about before. Now you can use them from switching, for RSS, for filters, uh, for anything. Uh, how we, so what, how we present in the DPDK? At the moment, it's a private APIs uh, for I4T, but we hope that with all this uh, happening in the community with SmartNIC, with PJ, eventually it will be uh, merged into existing or some generic API. So at the moment, only three functions you need to uh, use to work with profiles. Test PMD is uh, supported uh, and um, you can use it, you can try everything with test PMD. So it's a quite simple API because this is about loading profile. Everything else you can do through existing APIs that support filters, tunnel filters, RSS flow director. So this is just about to change your uh, parser, okay? And this is, again, very quickly, how, for example, GTP looks, how Nick sees uh, GTP before and after. Before you apply profile, Nick doesn't know that there is a special port 21, 22, and 21, uh, which you need to parse as a GTP packet, GTPC and GTPU. So when it receives a packet, it will see outer header, but it doesn't know that it needs to parse again and again to get to inner uh, packet in case of uh, GTPU. So you load the profile, and now all those fields from inner packet, including tunnel ID, available for software to use for filters. And then, again, on field descriptor, on receive descriptor, you will see it's not just UDP, now it's TCP in IPv6 in GTPU. Again, saving a lot of clocks for classification, uh, distributing it to different queues according to inner uh, fields, not outer. And now I pass it back to Brian to show our small demo. So this is a screenshot of a live demo that, uh, that we have. So we have traffic coming into our adapt or in two sets of adapters, uh, dual port 25 gig adapters. We've got GTP traffic coming in on port one, GTP uh, C, echo and SCTP, so basically control plane uh, packets coming in on the second port, and then what's listed here is an add-on controller, quick, and on the second port of the add-on is like IPsec traffic. Yeah, so again, you can think about it as a appliance somewhere, it's a gateway, so it sits somewhere in the border, so whatever two panels on left side, it's connecting one segment, and two panels are connecting to seconds. Okay, so just a use case, but it's uh, what we're trying uh, to present. And as, as you can see, it sees IPv4, UDP, and then an L4 payload on most of these, because it doesn't understand GTP um, packets by default. By applying the profile, now we can see further in, you can see that the traffic is 
either uh, GTPU, IPv4, uh, UDP, or TCP on the first port. You can see the GTPC and GTPU echo on the second port, and the different types of QUIC and IPsec are. Um, yeah, and now you have enough entropy. Because you have now enough yeah. entropy, your distribution is quite even. Yeah. So, so now yeah. you can use yeah. RSS automatically kicks in and it spreads it across the cores. Now are the queues. We can go a step further, create queue regions with a number of queues per region and start directing traffic specifically into those queue regions. And so now we can separate the traffic out where it makes sense on the first, pro um, on the first uh, port. We left it basically wide open because it doesn't bias anything to separate the true um, UDP and TCP out onto different uh, queue regions. But for quick, we separated it out just to show that we can do that. So I'm going to hand it back to uh, do the summary so we maybe yeah. have some time uh, for questions. And again, we have it supported in GPDK. So we can run it on any operating system that supports the PDK. Manasi, we're talking about yesterday on uh, Windows. So here actually we have two screens. Left screen is a quick running on Microsoft Windows in the PDK. And right uh, screen is what we just showed uh, running on Linux. So again, as long as uh, it's, you have the PDK running, it doesn't matter. You can run, apply this profile on Microsoft, on Linux, Okay, we haven't tried FSD, but <laughs> should be possible as well. So it allows you dynamically to reprogram your Nix. You don't need to do anything. You can add new protocols. You can add crazy combinations. If you would like, you can completely reprogram your device. If you don't need a TCP, IP, it's a special Ethernet protocol. Yeah, you can reprogram device completely to uh, support your uh, protocols. And again, no need to reboot, no need to change your hardware, no need to change your uh, firmware. One more. So just want to give a shout out to our team, y'all and uh, Johan and uh, Robin, the core team that helped develop this, and then Helena Hitching uh, from the DPTK team. There are a lot more people that were involved, but ran out of room on the slide. Um, and if you're interested in the GUI that we used, uh, it is an open source project that, that I've been working on as well, and the link's there. So with that, trying to catch up on a little bit of time here for you, and uh, we have a couple minutes for questions. Hi. I have two quick questions. First question is, uh, you know, the, if we change the profiling uh, during the flights, is there any packet loss? That's first question. Second question is, uh, any performance uh, penalty after you have uh, you know, that features? Uh, again, yes, if you, apply, if you apply it on runtime, you probably will lose some packets. But uh, if it's more about VM or VF deployment, first you will uh, deploy your profile, and then you deploy VM. So while VM starts and your profile already steady and running. So in this case, you won't, uh, you won't care that you lose few packets. It's more about that if you have a server and you want to deploy new profile for new VMs, you deploy it, you deploy your VMs when they don't need it, you remove VMs, uh, redeploy some different profile, and deploy new VMs. So it means that you can save a lot of time on just uh, without reboot, without uh, firmware update, anything. So you, yes, you can lose it, but I don't think it's um, important uh, for use cases when you're deploying uh, VMs after you apply profile. And for performance, no, there is no performance hit because again, uh, we reprogram parser which on silicon level and it does, we don't care. So perf there is no performance hit uh, when you apply new protocols. Yeah, it's just expanding out the, the current protocol layer uh, parser and modifying that. So it stays at the same same or, same or better performance in most cases is what we found. Yeah, because it gives you extra boost on a classification. I think we have. Actually, uh, I was going to suggest we hold them to the panel, if that's so, OK. Both so, these guys so are going yeah, to back. We're yeah. both going to be up to the, uh, we'll the panel this afternoon. 40 minutes panel, so yeah. We yeah. Can we got try a 40 to keep, minute get us back on time here. Back. OK, thank you very much. Yeah, thank okay. you.